Uh, hello to our Pinellas County Mobile Home Park community residents and welcome to the 2022 Pledge to Plan Hurricane Preparedness webinar. My name is Jess McCracken and I'm the whole community specialist here with Pinellas County Emergency Management. And as we know, June is quickly approaching and for us Florida residents, that means starting to get prepared for hurricane season. Hurricane season begins June 1st and runs through November 30th each year. And once again, we are faced with what is being projected as an above average hurricane season. Mobile home communities are especially vulnerable to high winds and the severe weather conditions associated with a storm. And according to the National Hurricane Center, no mobile or manufactured home, no matter how new it is, can be a safe shelter from hurricane force winds. For this reason, mobile home residents must always evacuate when an evacuation order is called, regardless of their evacuation level. Understanding your exposure, knowing what your options are, and making a plan for evacuation will help keep your family safe before, during, and after a storm. And this is why Pinellas County Emergency Management encourages all Pinellas County residents to take the pledge to make a plan for the 2022 hurricane season. The goal of this webinar is to provide you with the information and resources needed to create that plan and get through hurricane season safely. To help us do that, I'd like to welcome our panelists. Yvonne Graham, Division Chief Emergency Management for the City of Clearwater. Summer Marr, Public Educator with Margo Fire Rescue. Hi, I'm Sam Boisbert. I'm the uh, Emergency Management Coordinator for the City of Pinellas Park. Hi, I'm Alexis Lawrence with St. Petersburg Fire Rescue, Public Education Training Specialist. Good afternoon, Amber Bolding, Emergency Manager for the City of St. Petersburg. Hi everyone, this is Lana Stavanovich. I'm the training coordinator for St. Petersburg Fire Rescue. Great, thanks so much panelists. We look forward to hearing from you in just a little bit. So preparing for hurricane season can be overwhelming and we understand it's a lot of information to take in all at once, like drinking from a fire hose. Not to worry, all the information and resources discussed during the program will be emailed to you following the presentation, along with additional helpful resources, tools, checklists, um, a link to the recorded video, and the full PowerPoint presentation. We have scheduled some time at the end for question and answer, but that doesn't mean you have to wait till then to ask your questions. The Q&A feature has been enabled for you to submit your questions at any time during the program, and to access that, you'll just select the Q&A feature button on the floating toolbar on your screen. To get a better gauge of our audience and learn your level of preparedness um, and understanding of your responsibilities in a storm, we'll also be asking some polling questions and then sharing the results with the attendees. They are anonymous and we won't hold you, you know, won't hold them against you. So we definitely encourage you to participate. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll go ahead and get started. So Suzanne, let's talk about some before the storm preparation techniques. Um, first, what do we want our mobile home residents to know for the 2022 hurricane season? Um, hi, good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, basically, uh, no two storms are the same. So if the last storm missed you, don't assume the next one will. So to be prepared for any storm, there's three things that everyone must do, and that's know your risk, make a plan and stay informed. Great, and what do you mean by know your risk? Um, it's really about hazard awareness, understanding the threats and impacts from hurricanes and tropical storms, such as storm surge, flooding, high winds, knowing how to protect yourself, knowing what zone you're in. Um, this is really particularly important for our new residents who may not be familiar with hurricanes and our seasonal storm patterns. And it's a reminder for our long-term residents as well to maintain their awareness. Um, take storm surge and flooding, for instance. Storm surge, it's not a gradual rising of water. It happens quickly, it's pushed ashore by strong hurricane winds. It can be life-threatening. Um, and then like storm surge, flooding from rain can be fast moving and dangerous. And our county, Pinellas County is extremely vulnerable to these water threats because of its coastal and low-lying geography. And then wind, it's another factor. 
So most of you, many of you may be familiar with the Cat 1 through Cat 5 categories, the Saffir Simpson scale. Um, Cat 1 storm has a 74 to 95 mile an hour sustained winds that can cause roof and siding damage, even to those well-built frame homes. Mobile homes and manufactured homes are just not strong enough to withstand those high winds, even when they're strapped down. So even the newer mobile homes built under the tougher laws can't really withstand those hurricane force wind gusts. You've got things like carports, awnings, parts of the home that can become deadly missiles. So the bottom line is we want all of you to know um, when an evacuation order is given, all the mobile home and manufacturing home residents must evacuate. And that's no matter the category of storm or the evacuation zone you're in. Absolutely. Great information. Thank you. And how will our mobile home park residents get the evacuation order and know when it's time to evacuate? Great question. Um, and you, you can see from the slide, there are uh, there's a plethora of different ways that you can get information. Pinellas County has some great ways to find information and get notifications. Um, if you haven't done so already, we recommend that you sign up for the county's emergency notification system known as Alert Pinellas. Once you register, you'll be able to receive emergency notices um, by phone call, text message, or email. We also recommend that you have a NOAA weather alert radio handy so you can get automatic alerts and that's directly from the National Weather Service and that's when any dangerous weather is in your area. You've also got um, social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor, and those are great tools for information. Just be sure that you're following the official accounts like those from Pinellas County, uh, National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center, and also your city government uh, pages, just to name a few. You've got TV, you've got radio, there's also digital billboards. Um, a lot of the businesses in Pinellas County have opted into the county's billboard um, alert system, and they will put those emergency alerts on their signage. So the important thing though is during an emergency, you can check the emergency information page of the county website, and that's gonna get you a lot of information. The County Information Center or CIC will be open so you can call them for questions um, and they'll post all that on there. Um, you'll, you'll see that on the alerts. Um, the county live chat feature that's on there regularly, it's going to become a part of the CIC, the County Information Center during emergencies. And that might be a preferable way for individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing to get information. And that can be found on any page on the county website. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Now, you mentioned Alert Pinellas. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, Alert Pinellas, it's a really great tool that provides residents with um, timely alerts, and they come from not just Pinellas County, but also from uh, the local municipalities can also send alerts, um, and, you, and the county sheriff's office can also send alerts as well. Um, things like severe weather events, oil water notices, um, severe weather, evacuation orders particularly, and other information that might be um, of immediate need. Um, and the way that you sign up, you go to the website, Alert Pinellas website, and I don't know if you can see my screen here, but this is a little card that um, I send out to our residents, and it has the Alert Pinellas website, and you just register, enter your contact info, um, then you get to choose how you want to receive those notifications. It can be text message, email, phone call, or all above. Um, your information is protected. Um, it's not going to be used for any other purpose, and it's a free service. So it's a really great way to get those emergency alerts plus any other uh, really important information that's happening in the county. Great. Thank you so much. And again, to our attendees, we will be sending all of this information out. So thank you so much, Suzanne. Sure. We are going to go to our first polling question. And the question asks, I plan to register for Alert Pinellas. And I already see some responses coming in. We appreciate you engaging and would like to learn about the community and what resources you know about and what resources you need to hear about. And we'll have a couple more seconds to get these in. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and share this. 
as you can see, if we aren't already registered, we are planning to register. And that's what we like to hear. So thank you so much. Uh, next, I would like to welcome Alexis Lawrence. And I wanna talk a little bit about evacuation procedures and options. So once an evacuation order is called, what are the options for locations to evacuate? A great question. Um, so when you're evacuating, uh, you have a couple of options. So one, you can find a host home, uh, and that would be either a family member or a friend whose home uh, is not in a flood zone. Um, if they have the room and availability for you to stay with them, uh, that's a great option. However, just make sure to plan that in advance. Um, the other option would be to stay at a hotel, motel, or an Airbnb. Uh, of course, again, you want to make sure that these are out of uh, the evacuation zone um, and make sure there's availability for that. Um, lastly, your third option would be a public shelter. Um, make sure to register for those if you are seeking out a public shelter and make sure to know which one is closest to you in your area. Um, you can also go out of state or out of town. Um, however, that could also fall into the hotel motel. Make sure uh, it's out of the zone there. Great, thank you so much. Now we will do our second polling question. When ordered to evacuate, I plan to uh, evacuate to the home of a friend or family member in a non-evacuation zone, evacuate to a hotel, motel, or Airbnb in a non-evacuation zone, evacuate to a public shelter, evacuate out of town or out of state, or I do not plan to evacuate. Getting some good responses here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share these results. So it looks like our attendees today have created their plan and figured out where they're gonna go. And that is the most important step when preparing for hurricane season is to make that plan. Great. So let's talk about public shelters. Uh, what type of public shelters are available in Pinellas County and what are some important things residents should know about public shelters? Absolutely. There are three types of shelters. There's your general shelter, a special needs shelter, and pet friendly shelter. Um, whichever shelter you choose though, think of these shelters as a lifeboat, not a cruise ship. Um, they're not meant to be your first priority. Um, if you can have another resource, like we just talked about, using a host home, hotel, motel, uh, something of that nature, that is going to be um, the first best option, but the public shelters are there for you. Um, you should consider this, again, your last resort. Um, if you must use one to keep safe, please consider spacing. Um, as we're still going through COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you should be prepared that when using a shelter or staying at a shelter, it's not always the most pleasant. You won't necessarily have privacy and resources can be limited. Um, it would be your responsibility to bring things such as a blanket, air mattress, earplugs, clothes, any sort of entertainment you might want. Um, you won't have a huge space though, so consider your immediate needs and pack sparingly for a minimum of three days. Okay, great. And what about our special needs residents and uh, pet friendly shelters? What are those options? Yeah, if you are in need of a special needs shelter, um, it's in, it's it is extremely important to register um, for special needs shelters, especially if you were in need of transportation assistance, that would definitely need to be done in advance. Um, so pre-registering allows your shelter to properly prepare for your needs. 
Um, if, you'll know, if you know you will need assistance getting to the shelter, it is mandatory you pre-register. You will not be able to register for assistance during a mandatory evacuation. Um, so at that point when the evacuation gets called, you want to already know where you're going. Uh, and there's a couple of places uh, that are kind of spread out throughout the county. Oak Grove Middle School is one. John Hopkins Middle School is the other, and then Dunedin Middle School as well. Um, so when you register, it'll put you in the placement that is best fit for you, uh, especially if you need that transportation. Great, thank you so much, Alexis. Um, Summer Mar from Largo. Let's talk about um, the registration process for special needs. We heard Alexis say you would need to register. Um, how do you register for special needs? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So there's a couple of different ways that you can register for the special needs program. And again, um, in regards to a special needs shelter, that's if you are a resident who needs basic medical monitoring, um, perhaps like electricity for a CPAP machine or oxygen, or you might have some mobility needs. So a few ways that you can register are go online to pinellascounty.org slash special needs, and you can download, there is a fill, there's a fillable PDF that you can enter in your information online, and then you'll just print out that form, and then you can mail it to Pinellas County Emergency Management at the address that you see here on screen. You can also call Pinellas County Emergency Management at 727-464-3800, uh, and give them your address and they will send you a form by mail. And that is needed if you are needing to go to a special needs shelter or if you need transportation assistance, although you might not go to special needs, it could be for general shelter or even pet friendly shelter, you'll still need to fill out that form and check the transportation assistance box if you need um, help getting to the shelter. That's great information, thank you so much. Um, what do I bring to a special needs shelter? So in regards to a special needs shelter, you want to think any special medical equipment that you use um, in everyday living. So you'll want to have your you know, oxygen concentrators, um, you know, batteries for your hearing aids, any mobility devices, your wheelchairs, walkers, canes. You want to have any type of special foods if you're on a special diet, you wanna bring snacks and items for that. You want to have, and this is for any type of shelter, you want to have a sleeping arrangement. So you wanna bring either a twin size mattress. Remember, you're not going to have a lot of space. So even depending on what your ability is, whether you wanna have a mattress or maybe even a fold out lawn chair, some people bring that because the space is still going to be limited some bedding, a uh, blanket and pillow, and your medications. So again, any of your medical equipment and then the medications that you need. And remember, if uh, the governor declares a state of emergency for, for Florida, if we are under a hurricane warning, you are able to go to the pharmacy and get a 30-day supply of your prescriptions. Even if you've already filled them, um, you have that right to be able to get those because we wanna make sure all of our residents have those medications um, in case those pharmacies are not, we're not able to access them post-storm. Absolutely. Now you talked about some things that are the same between a special needs shelter and a regular shelter. Do you wanna talk a little <laughs> bit more about what residents should consider bringing to a general shelter? And is there anything that is prohibited? Sure, so it depend, you know, any shelter that you go to, these are some things that you wanna think about bringing. Again, medications and copies of prescriptions, you also want to have the thought before you start packing, um, pack light because space, again, is very limited. Bringing some hand sanitizer, uh, baby wipes are, are great, any type of sanitizing wipes. Um, in regards to COVID, just have those precautions. Again, having a mask available. Some non-perishable foods that you prefer for snacks. There is going to be food and water provided to you at shelters. Um, but just if you have anything in particular that you want to bring for dietary needs or just some special additional snacks, bring those. Also bringing your own water would be helpful if you want to have a gallon of water on hand. But remember, those supplies will, will also be there at the shelter. Again, bedding for a small space, 
And if you have your children with you, bringing any of your children's necessities, infant needs, any, uh, infant formula, or any type of um, needs that you'll need for your babies, personal hygiene items, a change of clothes and your eyeglasses, some things to help pass the time, some games and toys, and bring your important documents, but also think of security as well. You want to take security into consideration. You don't want to bring all of your expensive jewelry. Uh, you do want to have cash on hand, but think small denominations. There is going to be a lot of people in those shelters, and you do want to be watchful and mindful of your surroundings um, in, in thinking about what you're bringing. You want to be able to keep an eye on all of your items. Also, in regards to your important documents, uh, your insurance policies, a lot of these items can, can be digital now, um, but making sure that you have those important records that you need in case post-storm your home is not accessible and you're going to need those documents. All great information and all of this information can help you make your plan depending on where you're going to be going. Uh, once, you, once you determine that, um, you can use all these resources to, to really make a good plan and get prepared ahead of the storm during blue skies prior to hurricane season. So let's ask another polling question. Um, do you have an emergency disaster plan? Yes, I have a disaster plan for myself and my family, or no, I do not have a disaster plan. And again, we appreciate you responding. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll and let's share these results. So we're about half and half. So that's really great for those that do. And for those that do not yet have a plan, that's why we're here today. So um, you will soon have one. Uh, let's ask this next polling question here. To your knowledge, does the community you live in have a disaster plan for the park grounds? Yes, the park has a disaster plan and it has been shared with residents. I know the association does not have a disaster plan or I do not know this information. Some things that you may not think about as being a resident of a mobile home community is the grounds also have to be prepared, such as the pool furniture, um, getting things that could become um, windborne, put away and, and locked up and secured. So it's important to have a plan for the community as well. Okay, great. So we, we do have some communities that have disaster plans and have shared that with their residents. Um, and that is fantastic. We, we definitely like to hear that. And if you don't know or you don't have a plan in your community, definitely encourage your property management company or your um, maybe neighbors to start some sort of uh, task team and just come up with a plan for the ground preparation to make sure that you uh, can come back to as much of your community as, as possible and keep everybody safe, keep your vehicle safe and your homes as safe as possible by getting everything strapped down and put away. Great, thank you so much. Um, next, uh, we will hear from Lana Stavanovic from St. Pete. Hi, Lana. Um, before the storm, uh, when preparing for hurricane season, what should residents be doing in terms of their property? How can they prepare their property? That's a great question, Jess, thank you. Um, so just to follow up on what you were saying, just like the park maintenance takes care of the community pool and the clubhouse and the property, um, it is each resident's responsibility also to make sure that they take care of their personal property as well. Uh, and the best way to do that is we all recommend that you follow the ABCs. And that stands for anchor, brace, cover, and strap. And I'll go over those steps a little bit more in depth. So the first one is anchor. Um, so we recommend that you clear your yard and your entire area surrounding your property. So similar to what the grounds maintenance is gonna do, we want you to bring anything from inside, from outside on the yard that can become windborne. So this is your 
holiday decorations that you have outside, your pots, uh, your plants, um, if you have any lawn chairs, these are all things that we need to bring inside because all those items can become airborne and can become very dangerous and destructive. Um, not just to your property, but again, the wind is a very strong, powerful thing. So it can actually cause damage to surrounding um, mobile homes as well. Um, we do recommend that you do switch to shredded bark or other lightweight mulch, uh, again, to eliminate any potential windborne missiles. So we want you to replace if you have any gravel or rock landscaping, um, this would be a great time to replace that. Also trim and anchor down any trees. Um, and something that I really wanna to touch base on is you should ask a professional installer about recommended methods to secure storage um, and also your utility sheds or any other vulnerable structures. The next thing uh, we recommend is the B, and that stands for brace. Uh, we want you to bolt all your doors with foot and head bolts. Um, we want to always recommend it, always um, reach out to a licensed um, bonded pro professional. That way they can ensure that all structural work is permitted and done properly. Um, again, I wanna stress on make sure that you get a licensed professional to do this kind of work. And then the C is gonna stand for cover. Um, we want you to cover all large windows and doors. Something else, and it's a great time while we get ready for our spring cleaning. Um, we wanna make sure that your doors and windows are properly caulked and or weather stripped. Um, this is gonna reduce any potential water intrusion. So not just for hurricane season, we do live in Florida and we have lots of storms and a lot of rain that's coming our way. Um, starting to start spring and summer seasons. So like I mentioned, possibly for your spring cleaning, this is a great time to go around the windows and make sure that they're properly sealed. And then the S is going to stand for strap. Um, so before evacuating, we recommend that you tie down any freestanding fixtures in your yard and then also your carports as well. Great, thank you so much, Lana. So just a couple of tips and tricks before the storm for preparing your property. Um, you want to bring all large yard items in, uh, like Lana said, anything that you can't pick up and move should be strapped down, um, especially carports when we're talking about uh, a mobile home unit. Uh, the wind gets right under that carport and it can rip it up and it's attached to the roof and um, we've seen some substantial damage to the roofs because the uh, carport wasn't strapped down. And there's um, uh, several products that you can look into. Um, again, talk to somebody that uh, is licensed, insured and bonded an inspector. A lot of times they'll come out for free to, to give you an estimate or suggestion. So um, definitely take advantage of that resource. Um, in advance, you wanna remove old decayed trees, any broken branches, um, get all of that cleaned up. Um, it was definitely a good point to recommend getting a professional. Um, you don't wanna be uh, 20 feet up in the air trying to trim these trees. And dispose of any piles of the loose trees once they are down, um, don't leave those um, during, you know, a storm's coming, you don't wanna have those out by the street. Um, all of that will become windborne and that can cause uh, substantial damage to autos and your units and um, even to people if people happen to be outside. Um, for the park, the community itself, if you've got a pool on your property, you don't wanna drain your pool, you wanna super chlorinate the water. Um, so a lot of, uh, misconception with the draining of the pool. Um, the pools can pop if you drain all the water out. So the practice is to just over chlorinate the water to um, help any of that sludge from forming if you're not able to get back to the property right away. And on the next slide, you will see our Nomeo. And this is a campaign that we um, like to share with our mobile home park communities and it's no gnome left behind. Just a reminder to get all of the lawn ornaments um, up and put away inside a shed um, that's got a door that closes. You don't want to put them up next to the house um, when we'll be coming from 
every direction or you don't know which direction. So you really want to get those items secured. So thank you so much. Uh, we will hear from Chief Graham next and discuss some after the storm considerations. Hi, Chief. Uh, what should residents expect after the storm and what are the safety considerations when returning home? Good afternoon. Uh, after the storm, a lot of the misconceptions is that as soon as the winds die down or the rain stop, it's safe to go outside. And it's actually just the opposite. You need to kind of let the community uh, recover a little bit, let your public safety go out, let your push teams go out, clear the roads and clear the, the large trees that have, that have covered the roads. And you also need to let your public utilities get out in the roads and start moving those down power lines. Um, after the storm can be just as dangerous as during the storm or even more so because your guard tends to be let down. One of the big things you need to do is make sure you look for or avoid the down power lines. These lines, even though they are down on the ground, doesn't mean they're dead. That means they can still have, they can still be live and they can still have large lines, amounts of voltage that go through them. Touching these lines can be death dealing for you. Even if these lines are laying over the top of your home, it could, in, it could charge your house or, or, or charge parts of your house with electricity, which can be dangerous if you go into these areas without uh, the lines being secured by uh, the power companies. Flooded areas is also a bad, a bad deal that we need to worry about. Uh, just because you might be able to see the road doesn't mean that it hasn't been washed out underneath or that you even know where the sides of it are. And also standing water can be a hazard. Uh, looking at the standing water, if you walk over it or walk into it, it could be extremely deep due to a washout and then people can, again, be another hazard where people can drown. Uh, one other thing you need to worry about is entering a home with major damage or roof or walls. While it still may look like it's up or that it might temporarily be solid, if you have a large structure or a large tree on top of it, you going into that home could disrupt something and actually cause it to, to collapse. So if there's any damage to it, you need to make sure that you don't go into it, stay away from it, and then call the proper contractors, which were discussed in some of the previous slides. And then another thing is the power outage. Treat all traffic lights as a four-way stop. These lights um, or can be out for a period of time. Just driving through them can cause a hazard and can cause accidents. So you need to make sure at any intersection where there's no, no lighting, uh, treat as a four-way stop to make it safe uh, as you go through and try and travel back to your, your property. Great, thanks so much, Chief. A lot of great information and safety tips to consider. We wanna keep all of our residents safe. Um, I wanna talk about flooding because we've had a lot of questions about that um, and other safety considerations uh, for the mobile home parks. Uh, Ms. Summer? Are there yes. other considerations for our mobile home park residents? Yeah, so when it comes to flooding, uh, what you want to remember is flooding is different in regards to your flood zone and your evacuation zone from storm surge. So flooding is going to occur from heavy rains. Uh, it does come from storms, but the storm surge is what's going to affect which evacuation zone you're in, where um, the storm surge comes from those heavy winds that come from our tropical storms and our hurricanes. So the flood zone is is different than your evacuation zone. And if you are a homeowner, uh, you want to remember that many, many homeowners, the mortgage lenders require flood insurance, but most homeowners insurance doesn't necessarily cover flood damage. So you want to make sure that you talk to your insurance provider and make sure that you're covered. And if you are in a moderate or high risk flood zone, that is where um, those, those mortgage lenders would be more uh, willing to require that flood insurance. So definitely something that you want to look into and find out what your flood zone is. And you can go to pinellascounty.org slash flooding to find out which zone you are in. Um, everyone is essentially in a flood zone. It just depends on whether it's low, moderate, or high risk. So when you go to that website, there is um, another link that you can click on that will take you to a website that is similar to the Know Your Zone app where you can find out your evacuation zone by putting in your address. Um, you can also put in your address and find out which um, flood zone you are in. Just as Chief Graham said, you want to stay away from flood waters. Um, you might have heard the phrase, turn around, don't drown. You definitely don't want to drive through any flood waters, even if you think your car can make it. Um, just a few feet of flood waters or even a few inches of flood waters 
can cause a lot of uh, damage to your car and can be very dangerous to you. So make sure that you don't drive through any of those flood waters. Um, some other risks, uh, not just in regard to flooding, but just some other items to consider as, as manufactured home community members. Think about making sure you always have your uh, working smoke alarms in your home and your fire escape plans practice. Um, when it comes to storms, we did have some incidents post Irma where uh, the power outages were very prevalent throughout the community and they would have their stove tops not working. And so uh, just by habit, it became a countertop. And a lot of people use this as counter space and they would have pizza boxes or trash can lids on top of that. And then once the power was restored, some of those stoves were still on and it caused a lot of fires. So just when we're talking about safety precautions um, for, for your homes, just ensure that you are not using your stove tops as counter space uh, anytime, but especially you know, post-storm if you do have those power outages since the power could come back on and um, ensure you have working smoke alarms in your home. And uh, depending on your fire department in, in your municipality, um, they could provide with free smoke alarms, just depends on your department. Great, thank you so much. Those are great resources and we will definitely get those out to all of our attendees. Um, thank you so much to our panelists for all of this wonderful information and taking your time to be with us today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull our last polling question. And this is uh, results from the information from the webinar. Um, as a result of this webinar, I, and you can answer as many as apply, Feel more prepared, uh, we'll register for Alert Pinellas, we'll build a hurricane kit, we'll start a personal disaster plan, we'll encourage my community to start a disaster plan, I will be changing my plans for evacuation, and I will be pledging to make a plan. So let us know um, how this webinar helped, if it helped, and we will also be sending out a follow-up survey. Please take some time to fill that out. Your responses are very valuable to us and will be used in future planning of events. Um, a link will pop up once you leave the webinar and you'll also be getting a follow-up email and can access the survey that way. So whatever works for you, we appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share these results. So it, it looks like people are definitely feeling more prepared, um, going to use that Alert Pinellas tool. Um, all of this is such great information and uh, we are so happy that this information was able to give you the education and resources and tools that you need to uh, know what to do, how to make your plan. Um, so thank you so much for participating today. Switch to the next slide, please. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Pinellas County Emergency Management for the 2022 hurricane season is encouraging all residents to take the pledge to make a plan for hurricane season. And these are our pledge to plan QR codes. We have it, uh, the survey in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So if you have a phone, you can just take a picture of the QR code, a little link will pop up. You click on that link and it'll take you right to the survey. It's a very brief survey and just asks if you will be making a plan for your personal residence, your family, um, if you are a business owner, um, for your business and your employees, um, and some other uh, information from you. And also if you want to be added to a distribution list to receive future communication from Pinellas County Emergency Management um, about upcoming events, um, other educational opportunities and that type of information. So it's not Alert Pinellas um, registration. It is uh, basically outreach for the educational programs that we provide. Great. So again, we will be sending a follow-up survey. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I'm going to go to the Q&A because I did see some good questions uh, pop in and uh, any of the panelists, feel free to jump in if you 
um, want to help us out with these. Uh, the question is, are shelters always in the same location? Thank you for that. Yeah, generally, yes, there are um, uh, specified shelters throughout the county. Um, and based on the storm that's coming through, will depend on which shelters are open and when. So the, the, the best way is to, when the um, look at your um, annual hurricane guide, it will have a list of all the shelters in there. And then when an evacuation is called, just um, check with, you'll get a notification through Alert Pinellas and always check with all the other resources that we mentioned earlier to get information. Great, thank you so much. And it looks like we just had one more, I think it was in the chat, here we go. Um, are there shelters dedicated to homeless people during a hurricane warning or would that fall under general shelter? Go ahead, Summer. Any, um, any resident can go to uh, any shelter depending on their needs. So that would fall under either general if they, um, if, you know, if their medical conditions allow them just to go to a general shelter. Um, they could go to a special needs shelter if they need uh, transportation assistance or if they have you know, basic medical monitoring needs um, or even a pet shelter um, if they have pets. So yes, they would fall under the same um, categories of shelters um, as any resident. Great. Um, I don't see any other questions um, coming in or um, coming in on the chat. Thank you, Mary, for that information. So if there are no more questions coming in, that will uh, wrap us up for today. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, stay tuned for the resource document with all of the uh, tips, information, checklists, tools, and the webinar video. And um, I will also provide the panelists information. So if this is the uh, fire department in your area, definitely reach out and see what uh, resources as Summer talked about. Uh, there may be some opportunities for you to get um, some smoke alarms. Um, so definitely reach out and see what resources are available. Um, I know that they would be happy to help you. Thank you so much and bye-bye.